This week on Lemon's Car Spotting. Hey, it's Nick and Eric. This is Lemon's Car Spotting. Let's get into it. If I can find the cursor on my screen. I got a gigantic monitor, by the way. Can't yeah. even find my mouse. It's so big. Oh, Lord. Yep. Right right into my wheelhouse to start. This is a, a Corsica, of course, in the natural state of Corsicas. <laughs> uh, mismatched wheels. Clear coat checked out probably sometime in the second Clinton administration. Uh, I think these had the seatbelt on the track. Basically, this was the GM equivalent of a Ford Tempo and all the trappings thereof. Four-cylinder at the base, uh, crappy V6 as the option. Pretty much, yeah, uh, the general mode... The, the tempo of General Motors. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, is that a Grand Am wheel on the back? I'm just going to point that out as a, uh, you know, a platform mate or stable mate or whatever. I, you know, this is one of those cars. We've talked about them a lot where they made six trillion, sold in good numbers, was an OK car for the first, what, two and a half years and 60,000 miles before things started to really take a turn. And then now they're completely gone. I mean, we've seen what, two of these in lemons, like, you know, we've seen, we were just talking about this, a larger number of opals than you'd think. Like right. it's into the double digits for opals, Corsica two at yeah. most. Yeah I, yeah, I think there's been a Beretta and a Corsica yeah. Beretta, of course, the two-door version of this. Right. By the way, this thing being pure white suggests it was probably either a rental car or a fleet vehicle of some sort, which is where they sold a ton of these things. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, visiting my mom's family in Detroit in the 80s, I uh, <laughs> wouldn't be surprised if we had one of these as a rental car. All right. I know we had a Lumina. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> Wait, what is this thing? It's a it's an Escort ZX2? No, I think it's the weird second gen Focus Coupe. Um, was that a thing? I have no yeah. recollection of this. Yeah, video. no, I mean, it's same. Uh, I was I was out to lunch when I worked in an office years ago and I saw one like this. Well, it wasn't exactly like this, but, uh, <laughs> but I was like, man, what the, the hell is that? And I had to like walk around it and be like, oh, I guess they made a two door non hatch. It's really bizarre. Um, but yeah, that's yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I thought it was a focus initially, but then I thought, well, they didn't make a little thin, a little two door. I mean, I guess that competes with the civic coupe of the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah sure. I, uh, you know, I, um, I the, we, we've said it before that the Focus is is a decent car. That the 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 second gen car we got in the states was a weird redressed first gen car for some reason. Yeah. The second gen Euro car is the same as a Mazda three, as a Volvo what S forty of the time. It's that yep. Ford Volvo Mazda shared platform. For some reason, they didn't bring us the focus of that, and and then we got this one, which at by the time it came out was kind of dated because it was just the redress first gen. Very strange, um, and I have no idea. I had no idea that there was a two door, I, and we're burying the lead as we often do. <laughs> There's a log involved. Yeah. And uh, I want to say, I mean, this has some of the trappings of, you know, your car got put on cinder blocks and your wheels stolen. But I don't think that's the case here. Because no. one, who would steal wheels like this? And two, I mean, the whole, the, you know, the entire brake rotor and everything is gone. So this has the, uh, the feel of parking lot maintenance. I don't know what the component is that's sitting on the ground there. But yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, this is this is a gentleman uh, just you know trying to keep things rolling on a budget. Yep, Gallipolis, Ohio, across from uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia, home of the Mothman. There you go. Now you know. Uh, a <laughs> a, uh, a Skoda, I think this is from Panama Car Spotting, so it's wow. outside my wheelhouse. <laughs> but man. Um, 
it looks like three different cars. Are you seeing this also? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that was the first thing that stood out to me. It was yeah. like, I, I remember reading a parody about the first generation Cadillac CTS about how at the product launch, the designer of the front met the designer of the back <laughs> for the very first time. This yeah. is the same deal, except that it's like three people at a minimum. Yeah. I mean, the rear end looks like it was lifted completely off of a Kia soul, uh, yeah. like from the wheels back. The front end looks like, well, there's ah, man. Here's the thing about Skoda that I've noticed in the few <laughs> times I've paid attention is it looks like the bootleg Eastern block version of sobs. Um, yes, that's so, fair. Yeah. So this looks like somebody, you know, uh, inflated a nine five at the front and then the middle, Jesus, I don't know what the hell's happening there. Just Cause that's like the, the worst. The, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the door off of it's like something that's not a car. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's like just completely <laughs> separate. Like, Oh, we have this. Uh, yeah, the Saab connection is that's fair because yeah, if you look at like a nine five wagon, uh, which I would say ultimately in the end is a successful design, it does have a lot of weird things that like well that doesn't line up, but yeah. it doesn't bother me. But yeah, when you stretch it vertically and smush it lengthwise, <laughs> then it starts to fall apart pretty quick. Yeah, Man. Skoda is now what part of the Volkswagen, the larger Volkswagen group? Is that? I think so. Yeah. yeah, they're made in. God, some of them are made in Romania. I want to say it's the uh, the Czech Republic is the main. Yeah, that's where the company is based and historically has been. But I want to say that that you know the Czech Republic after the uh, fall of the Soviet Union has becoming more and more westernized and so they figured you know this is getting too western for skoda we have to push it further into romania to yeah. get the right feel that we're going for yeah you got to inch towards the balkans with your <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah exactly all right Ooh. Okay, we're in the bushes uh Oh, it's a Suzuki. It's the, whoa, wait, is it more than one Suzuki? That's a Suzuki Esteem. Is that right? The, the the white one? Yeah. But then is that also a Suzuki next to it? Or is it just a Volvo? It looks like a Volvo or maybe a, one of the weird Subaru Impreza's. Yeah, later maybe. style. I thought for yeah. a split second it was a Kazashi, Kis but I, I think maybe it's just <laughs> in context of being next yeah. to the Esteem, which, I mean, for starters, they named the car the Esteem, and it's just... You know that that's the... Uh, yeah. Like, people with esteem don't buy an esteem, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. And uh, this one, you know, they aren't that... I mean, this is early 2000s, probably. Uh, yeah. And this has really accumulated accumulated a, an impressive amount of nature in a relatively short time, almost like it's been parked there for most of the time it's been around. Yeah, this smacks of, I have been parked longer than I ran. Um you can see the snail trails running down the front of fender. <laughs> yeah. And when you can see them from the street, that's probably not ideal. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a wagon. Yeah, I was going to, I was just about to say, I think it's a wagon, which, you know, makes it very desirable to everyone on the internet and no right. one in, in the world. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Christ, I don't know anything about these things mechanically. Nope. I don't think it matters. Um, no. Nobody was buying one and looking at the actual spec sheet. This was right. a, this is the price, therefore I am buying this. <laughs> or or even even more so, this is the financing. Like, right. you know, this yeah. is the monthly note. It's a short-term sort of audience they're shooting for with a car like this. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I'd rather have a Suzuki Esteem than whatever the Hyundai equivalent was from the same year. Yeah. Um, I feel like, because you know that Suzuki makes a really good motorcycle, like a like a world-class, you know, some of the models could be the best of the of that segment, you know? Yeah. Um, which I don't think Hyundai can say. I mean, Hyundai, what's the peak of Hyundai's ranking? Like the best thing that they make is the fourth they, best car you can buy, something yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean well let's not divulge into 
Eric dunks all over Hyundai. But I mean, <laughs> the best thing that Hyundai makes is the orange shipping containers full of oh, everything. That that's goes. fair. Yeah, you know, they they. I want to say that some of their industrial equipment, like their big, you know, whatever backhoe thing, is. Uh, maybe a month in the conversation although tell us in the comments if you're a caterpillar or a john deere type of guy is the hyundai tractor like sort of the same as like you know oh well i could have <laughs> got the caterpillar and i got the hyundai it's got a super good warranty it actually when it was brand new is it stacked up pretty well but now 10 years later kind of wishing i got the cat <laughs> all right Oh man! Oh boy! Yep. Bradley GT. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Man, I I don't know very many kit cars by sight, but the Bradley GT is one that is pretty tough to miss. Uh, it's got the uh, gull wing doors, uh, notably. Uh, obviously missing in this case. So you have the. Uh, I guess it's like a T-top. Um, yeah, I was going to say, it doesn't not work. Like, I thought initially, like, oh, it's a Roadster version of the Bradley GT. But then yeah. it's like, no, it's just the doors are gone. Yeah, I mean, this is you scratch off the GT and put Targa or put it after. <laughs> but uh, God, what a brilliant scheme that is. Yeah. Like, you know, you charge, <laughs> then you charge like extra, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, For less car. Yeah. I mean, Porsche yeah. really does have uh, their audience figured out in the right, right. most useful way to them. Yeah. Um, this yeah. is, of course, a uh, Beetle Pan car. So uh -huh. there's a air-cooled engine in the back hence the big i mean you you there's no way you can actually see out the back of this car at all no if because there was even a mirror but yeah the seating position is somehow like below the rockers yeah <laughs> you know it's, so like your head is barely poking out of that little slot yeah and yeah i mean we actually this is the one volkswagen kit car that has raced in the 24 hours of lemons uh -huh. and subsequently was the reason there are no longer volkswagen yeah. kit cars allowed yeah. in lemons. yeah 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 it was uh, definitely a we're never doing that again moment yeah. uh, that car got i think that was actually the last car we crushed um but it's it was possible. done it was done. the The captain of that team volunteered to yeah. be crushed because he did right. not want to see it. It, it was again. by request. We might have actually already retired the people's curse at that point. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the captain was like, um, "Hey, do you guys still do the people's curse? No. Can we do the people's <laughs> curse? <laughs> All right, whatever you say." Yeah. Uh, yeah, I cheated and read the comments, and it says uh, Bradley GT with Porsche dual carb. Which um, you know I don't know how you would know that unless this was your car. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. And that and that I will say that also ties in to our idea about you know removing important components and charging more. That's straight out of the Porsche playbook. So yeah, um, that is the Porsche in. playbook. Yeah. Yeah. I do right. like the slot mags on there. Yeah. Very period correct. Yeah. All right. Last car for the week. Ooh. Ooh, Chevy 2 slash Nova. It's an early one, so 63, 64-ish. Yeah. Um, caption says Malibu. I don't think that's right. I think it's a Chevy 2. Uh, if it was a Malibu, the Malibu was just a um, trim level for a while, I think. But that whole, the, the, all that crap is just... I, I can't parse 1960s car model trim, blah, right. blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. I will say, I mean, this appears to be California's got black plates, um, a classic patina. It looks very base spec. It's a four door, obviously. I don't know to what extent. I mean, California, one of the great things about car, old cars in California is it used to be pretty common to see cars like this drove driven by older folks they bought it new it's mm -hmm. completely original you know straight six all of that and uh you know that's slowly been eroding as uh you know those folks either time out themselves or realize like you know like everyone else boy if i just got a honda civic uh but you know it's it's not it's not unheard of. Occasionally you will see something like this being driven by an older, an older yeah. person, just like it's a normal car, which I think is great. Yeah. 
Yeah, I love I love the color of all things. I mean, uh, uh, one of the things that I think is a fair criticism of the automotive industry at the moment, among many, is that all of the cars are grayscale, and that's yeah. just boring as hell. Yep. Um, and, you know, I own two black cars, so I have yeah. no room to talk. But, you know, a pop of green or a teal or a red or an orange on a car that isn't, uh, you know, the only cars they really do that on now are either sports cars or economy cars because it gives somebody a reason to buy a Mitsubishi Mirage, basically. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and, you know, that that's well, kind of that. Well, on, I don't want to make a class comment, but I feel like the economy cars, like, all right, people are on a lower budget. It may be folks that make worse decisions and therefore, like, teal is a more popular yeah. car amongst them. <laughs> I think that's probably a fair assessment as yeah. uh, cynical automotive journalists yeah. that we yeah. are. Uh, yeah. But, you know, on a basic, you know, pedestrian midsize car, I guess the Chevy 2 is a compact, but, you know, this color would have been available on the Impala too. Yeah. Um, you know, that's cool. Uh, uh, that's something that I think is really missing from the current automotive landscape. Totally and agree. Although I think one of the things that makes it work on older cars is all of the chrome yeah. that, you know, nowadays you've got not only body color bumpers, but the bumpers are like 40% of the surface area of the car. Mm -hmm. And when you have a gigantic teal blob in the front and the rear of your car, it doesn't quite, have the same effect as this where like yeah car is teal but then it's got like really nice you know slick slim fitting chrome bumpers uh yeah. you know notwithstanding this one is bent backwards and right, 180 right. degrees but you know um so i feel like in a way you can't go back at this point because it just doesn't work with the way modern bodies are assembled i don't yeah. know yeah that's probably fair also you know how good would a blobby Nissan Rogue look with any color on it? So, like, I don't want to see an Ultima in this color. Yeah, I don't think. Oh, they did have it one in this color for years. Uh, it was like a, <laughs> yeah. it was a, a teal. Anyway, yeah. Moving on. Uh, I have the hooptiest, and man, what uh, what options to choose from? Uh, started off pretty strong with the Corsica, with all the mm -hmm. paint gone off of it. I mean, the Skoda. Good Lord, uh, out of the factory, one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. But, uh, you know, for its current condition and for being a weird submodel of a probably least desirable American car from the last 20 years, the focus being <laughs> held up by a log with the front wheel missing you know, down by the river. Uh, I think that pretty much seals it for me. That's, I don't know. You can get much more hoopty than this, you know, doing a brake change in a public parking lot. Yeah. Well, and yeah, in, in the right front corner only. Um, yeah. Once you involve a log, uh, right. <laughs> hard to beat. Uh, well, for the lemons build, the car we most want to see on a lemons racetrack, a lot of good choices. Can't do the Bradley for, <laughs> as we mentioned, we've never seen an esteem before, but we certainly have never seen a Skoda of any kind, let alone a Skoda Rooster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we totally slept on the name. I know. Oh, I, I was going to mention it earlier, and I forgot. And I was like, I got to come back to that. Uh, uh, and, and, and I will say that Panama Car Spotting, he points out that, uh, you know, didn't anybody on the marketing team uh, know English and know that Roomster was a stupid name? It's like, well, it's not stupider than cruise. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know that English being a second language was the reason for the, uh, for the questionable naming scheme. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, I am the G D Y in, uh, in uh, the comments, a.k.a. Johan says it's like hamster, but roomier, which yeah. I think actually does, adequately describe the overall vibe of this vehicle in any case needs to be on a road course go to wherever these were sold get one bring it uh it's it's legal in lemons as being a street legal car in a in, in a non-china country which is sort of our <laughs> threshold so uh yeah um you're good to go with this Yep. Uh, it's also a mini minivan kind of thing. Lots of room for storage, easy to cage, lots of headroom. So you can put tall people in the car. So 
There you go. Yeah. All right, that'll do it for this week on Lemon's Car Spotting. Keep finding your Skoda Roomsters and take <laughs> photos of them and tag them, and we'll find them and talk about it. You know, the little Cushman, uh, like, parking meter mobiles, those all end in stir. There's, like, yeah. the truckster and the vanster and the hallster. And this is, you know, when you upgrade from your Cushman, you can get yourself a Roomster. Yeah, it's like Napster, but for cars. <laughs>